So here we are, we've unearthed um, the uh, um, wiring and um, the whole mechanism on how the, uh, the table was uh, rigged and wired and uh, it's quite interesting because it seems that it was actually a, uh, a retro um, a retrofit and the yeah. table was probably manufactured um, and then this work was carried out in um, some little workshop probably in Chicago and uh, these channels were put into the table and the, the mechanism was devised and, uh, and, um, and the roulette table was adapted to become a cheating table. Um, and you can see what we've done is we've exposed the, ch the channels and removed the um, original wiring and uh, the table was wired as a complete circuit almost around the length of the yep. table um, in series. Um, the switches were in series. Yeah. The switches were in series and the, the batteries were housed under the main roulette uh, wheel and at the other end but um, we're rewiring it so we're only actually going to have one set of batteries because yeah. obviously batteries have become, come on a long way we don't need to draw so much power now. Um, so David's, uh, David's has sort of unearthed this and we've seen that the, the, the circuit runs around, um, starts from the battery um, in the main leg here, runs down the table um, and then interestingly comes off and spurs in here um, and then into here where the two little pivots are. The that, coils. Uh, the coils that power the two little pivots that actually trip the ball up. Um, the circuit then comes around to this point here where we have our first uh, button um, and this effectively makes a circuit or break, makes yes. a circuit um, and then that um, powers the two pivots that pop out um, which in effect trip up the ball when, uh, when the croupier is um, spinning, the, spinning the wheel. The second um, switch that the uh, croupier has access to um, is here which is a pressure, uh, a pressure switch um, which will just simply be under the cloth and activated like that. Um, we came across a third switch um, here at the end of the table which will be uh, activated by this little screw head here which um, one will simply press in and it will be sprung loaded on the end. And then the fourth um, and final cheat uh, button is here um, which again will be under the cloth and activated on pressure. So there are four points that the uh, croupier could effectively trip up the ball um, and just to refresh our memory on this so that the ball travels around the inside track of the of the uh, of the roulette wheel and when the croupier activates one of these buttons it's actually trip um, this little the little pivot comes out a, a tiny pin pops out on, on the ball track and trips the ball up so the the croupier is able to control where the ball lands within some degree of uh, um, margin um, into the numbers on the table corresponding to the bets um, where they're placed on the on the, on the roulette table. Yeah. So um, I suppose the only other thing we can say is that you know this. Uh, David's pointed out that this is a, a complete live circuit, and then this part here slides in, which gives access to another two two buttons. So uh, in its basic form it works here and here and then the croupier has the addition of uh, these two buttons here to trip up the wall. So this is one of those eureka moments. As we uh, as we started um, dismantling the uh, the table, we realised that they were the second leg also um, had uh, batteries in it, and uh, here they are. Um, first time they've seen the light of day since the 1930s. And we thought we'd uh, we'd get it on film to record the moment, but uh, here they are. Two original when were they made let's have a look 1929 the batteries were made packed in with newspaper to uh, to uh, protect 
to separate the two batteries as they were on top of each other with original cardboard from the same period and um, here we are this might require a bit of ironing but what have we got here let's have a look this is very exciting let's try and do this very carefully and see if we can see a date on there um, it looks like it's the bottom of the newspaper uh, let's see whether we've got a date carefully open her up what we've got here there we go there we go there we are wow look at this <laughs> I'll tell you what this is some of the best part of this job this is what it's all about and and this gives the uh, the table its unique provenance and uh, we have the bottom section of a Illinois Chicago newspaper and I'm sure if we read through some of these articles here we'll find that it's the late 1920s early 1930s there you are there you are